All right, uh, my name's Tim, and this is my artwork. Uh, I started a couple years ago with, uh, my only goal was just to learn how to use color and have fun. And I started with a cardboard box in my backyard and started spray painting, making a mess. And I started just not really following any kind of specific script or path. Um, I just would sit there with stacks of canvases and see what would happen. And I just had so much fun that I kept doing it until eventually I ended up working on pieces like this where I'm sitting over my dining room counter measuring out all these little tiny lines. Um, and uh, I, over time I tried to actually create some kind of depth or motion with uh, some of the effects that I found. And sometimes it works, a lot of times it doesn't. So I have a giant stack of recyclables. Um, and I've, I've since, since most of this is spray paint, uh, I do a lot of staging and masking inside and then I move outside to a tent. And after the first year I discovered that a lot of my problems were weather based. Uh, too cold, too hot, too humid, rain, snow. And uh, after getting frustrated with that for a while, I just started incorporating it. So now I have this kind of work for summer, um, a whole other style for winter, and a whole different style when it rains. Um, and I, I'm still trying to figure out where I'm trying to take this, where I want to go with it. Um, but I'm still just having so much fun playing with the color that I really can't even settle down on compositions or a narrative or to build some kind of structure to it. Um, there are images behind these lines and these kind of colors, but I don't really like to discuss them or explain them. I like the viewer to, to get what they want out of it, what they see. Um, so if you, if you look close, they're not even actually named or titled. It's just kind of a date and see whatever you want out of it. How do you arrive at those bands, thick, thin, um, some of them I try to actually build that kind of depth and I want to see if I can kind of fall into the painting basically. Um, and I usually start from the outside in and just kind of carve up the canvas. So tell us how you lay it down. You say mask it out. So you, I'm just, how do you get those little things? Right. That's what I, want to know. I, I literally sit there with a compass and measure out the and centimeters you, between each one. Asking, so then you're not spraying it all at once. Uh, I do layer by layer, and then I, I move forward. And after the first layer is done, I'll bring it inside and check my notes to see what I want what, I, what I want it to go in. Like right here. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like a gradation of spray. Yep. Now it's a spray can. It's not a spray like Correct. whatever they are. Yep. These things. But, and, but then you have this really thin, like, what are you masking it with? So get this is just tape. Uh, the, the really tiny ones are usually vinyl tape because they work best. But everything else is um, okay. whatever okay. I can find. Like a graphic designer would come yeah. out. Oh, it's just um, and I think with this one, I started with the, uh, I think I started with the red and then went to the blue. So, but now, yeah. as a, somebody that would use one of those guns, you can really um, control the spray. Here you have a lot of fine variation from this deep red to the, this is just a spray can? Yep. Um, I do use um, different kinds of spray cans and stuff with different caps and I can, I can play around with the, okay. the spray that comes out. But usually I just use the standard one. That's why you get the big bucks. <laughs> Yeah, to follow through on, on, on what Suzanne is asking about, particularly in this yellow and blue piece of work, yes. I'm, I'm really fascinated by the commonality of the gradient in, in, in the various stripes. And how did you do that? <laughs> uh, that one was actually pretty planned. Um, it's, it's actually meant to sit actually on any corner. You can just twist it around. I, I usually move them around in my house and uh, flip them upside down. And whatnot. You've got bands of gradient yep, I, through it and it's in all colors. That's what's I, I basically the, the base coat, um, I planned out the, the gradations. Basically, cl they're clouds. Shh, don't tell anyone. Um, <laughs> and then I basically followed through on the next level to do the same thing with uh, the opposite colors. And uh, that, that one kind of worked out. There's a lot of times where I'm when I put the second coat on, where I lose the thread of where those bands are going, and it kind of doesn't work as well. Do, do you mask over what you've already done to do another strike? 
Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, it's all one one shot, so one layer at one time, and then I'll plan out the next stage and mask it and do all the taping and all the lines, and then go back and put on the second layer. But you can't see what's underneath. That's where it gets a little tricky. I got to go back to the notes and uh, sometimes mark up the tape or the paper or uh, the boards that I'm working on. So, so we, the one that the the yellow and blue one, since we're talking about that one right now. Do you know how long it took you to do? Like how many, how many layers, how many stages did you go through to get that? Uh, that was actually uh, number three in a group of four. So I had two more times that I, I tested this out before I got to this yellow and blue one. Okay. Um, I'd probably say that one was maybe about a week and a half, two weeks of uh, back and forth after it dried. And how long do you have to wait between, before, like you, have, you mask it, you paint it, you wait for it to dry. But then you have to mask over what you just painted. So how long do you have to wait for it to completely dry before you can mask? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Otherwise, I'm pulling the pulling the, the actual paint and off the canvas. Of time, that comes back down to it. Kind of depends. It depends on the weather. Because since I'm working outside, uh, I use a tent. So it's, during summer, I can leave these out there in an afternoon and they'll cook. Like the tent will get to 120, 140 degrees in there, and it'll uh, you know a couple hours later, I can start masking again. Just curious, um, you must have been very proficient in math. Surprisingly, no. I was <laughs> terrible at math. Um, I was pretty good with computers, though, which I think is where I get some of the, the mechanical precision. Because that is like, that is amazing. Because you're just looking at this from an angle, the yellow and the blue, mm -hmm. and the way it resonates is just totally positive. Thank you. Is there any connection between barcodes at all? Um, I, I did have a series where I uh, played around with uh, binary encrypting data into the, the actual lines. So the, the, the lines would be ones and zeros, which you could translate to, to actual words. But <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> I found it was a little too um, kaluji. Like, I could get the message right, but it didn't really look very good. Um, so I wasn't too happy with that. It was an interesting process, though. I'm interested. Do you work on one at a time, or do you work in groups? Do they just, like speak to one another? Or are you conscious of doing different? Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, absolutely. I usually uh, I work in whole sequences. Like I'll take five or six to explore one one goal, and uh, I'll usually do them a couple at a time because I'm kind of limited by how much space I can take up on my drawing racks. Um, so I'll jam through five or six base coats, then move to a level two series, and then a level three series, and kind of just cycle through all the different projects that I have going on concurrently. Um, David's comment was very interesting because like, it's kind of also like a musical. You know, like a to your work. I, I do spend a lot of time jamming out to the music too. <laughs> but, uh, I'm lucky my neighbors are nice enough to put up with me. Can you talk a little bit about the ones that you do with the rain? Yes. Um, like I said before, weather plays a big part in getting out there and doing this. And uh, I kind of stumbled on another kind of style with uh, the raindrop series where I left some paint out or some canvases drying outside and a rainstorm moved in. And in a giant rush to get all the ones that I really, really liked inside and out of danger, a couple got left outside. And uh, when I came back out, I noticed that I kind of really liked the, the rain pattern on them. Um, the force of the rain hitting it actually dented some of the wet paint, so it impressioned the, the, the paint as it was drying. Um, and I kind of liked the way the, the rain had pulled up, so I started painting on top of that. And I developed this whole little uh, system where I'm outside in the rain, catching the raindrops on different canvases, <laughs> trying to wait for it to get just right so I can carefully bring it back to the tent and start putting like a top coat on and letting it kind of firm up and then putting paint on top of that and letting it dry. So you're really working with nature? I'm trying not to fight against it because uh, it, it caused a lot of problems early on. You must be entertaining the neighbors as well. Uh, we, we have a little uh, little system. I try to, you know, cool it with the painting when they're outside doing gardening and uh, make sure I'm nowhere near the gardens. And I have a filter system and a whole, it's a process. You need like a time lapse of, of your, your, what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll put that on the list of things. Yeah. <laughs> What's the largest one that you've done with the rain? Um, are you limited by size because of what it is? It does make it a lot more challenging, i found, simply because I'm, I'm carrying these things in and out of the tent and trying not to drop the, the raindrops I've collected while it's actually still raining. So 
Um, like these sizes, I don't know how I'm going to manage that yet. Um, but I have done some like 28 inch, a um, couple maybe 32. Well, rain drop, heat drop, and then you can't listen to the Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, they're not dropping where I want them, which is where it gets really frustrating. So I'll, I'll be out there with towels. Nope, not yet. Have you tried anything else to apply water with, like spray, anything Yeah, I, I was actually trying to, to make that happen myself so I didn't have to rely on the weather so much. Um, it, it came out okay, it just wasn't the same. I couldn't replicate just the the randomness of it. Yeah. So it, because you feel bad if it's raining and you're not prepared to paint one of those that day? Like, you think, oh, that's a missed opportunity? I'm, I'm actually getting to that point. Last, <laughs> last night was actually a big scramble because I didn't have everything set up. And when I was waiting for it to rain, my weather app is saying, any minute now, and nothing happens. And then two hours later, it starts raining, and I'm scrambling to, to get everything set up. And because the paint has to be a certain level of wetness, dryness, or well, the bait, the, what I'm doing now is I'll put the prime coat on and let that dry. So it, it actually acts as kind of like a buffer between the canvas and the water, which is a, kind of important to me because I don't want mold to be a problem years from now. Um, a couple of the first that I, first in the series that I did a couple of years ago, I still have on the wall to kind of monitor and see if anything you know, nasty happens with it. Um, so I, I've been playing around with a different a couple of different ways of doing it and uh, I, I kind of like priming the canvas first and then letting the rain sit between layers of paint. Well Tim, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, really yeah, thank you. One more. No, this oh, sorry. works so hard in the steps. Okay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to ask, before you said that they have a lot of meanings to different people and they're open for interpretation, but there's a way that you think about certain ones. Can you give us any insight into what you, what's going on? Um, you? For the most part, it's kind of more sceneries or uh, deconstructions of a concept. Like uh, I have one or a couple ones that are more like uh, flashing lights across windows in a city. Um, you really can't tell looking at it. It's just blocks of color and black and white and red and green over here. But I mean, that's my intent when I started it. And I just, I don't like telling people that because they come up to me and tell me, oh, this reminds me of this or it looks like that. And that's just as cool. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.